Welcome everybody, this is Nightsaber Z42, and I'm kinda back from vacation. And it is Roguelike Monday. This is Well, it's not really a new game, but it's one that's probably going to be getting a lot of trend. This is called Ziggurat. This is a first person shooter with roguelike elements, and as you've seen in the intro, your basic job is to go through the Ziggurat Tower and become a master of the arcane arts kind of thing. And I've been playing around a little bit with the game. <clears throat> As you can see, I've got some things unlocked, but there's still quite a bit that I have locked. Um, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not to start over, get rid of my save file, and start the whole process. But then, I saw that I had a new person, I had unlocked a new person, and as you can see there are new characters, and each one is unlocked a different way, and as you can see, for example, this character right here, unlock this character by dealing 35,000 damage with alchemic weapons, okay? So, you're gonna have to work at it to work these characters, and I just unlocked my first character, and I've been playing for a couple hours, so, um, you can change modes. But I'm going to be sticking on the normal mode for now. And hopefully as the series goes on, I will go up into hard and then maybe endless. There's an easy mode as well. But I'm going to play as Argo today, the apprentice. He's the main character, balanced stats without particular strengths or weakness. The other person that I have is Kraz. A very powerful magic wand skills, smaller mana pool for the other magic disciplines. And I'll explain what that would mean here in just a moment. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the game started. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Halls of Despair, Floor 1. We start off with a wand and with one random uh, other weapon. And there are four different types of weapons that you can get. The first one is your standard wand. The second would be like your tome spells. Third would be staff weapons. And the fourth is like your alchemical kind of like usually a grenade type uh, high damage dealing and as you can see over on the bottom right I have a number and the orb is kind of filled in and that's how much ammo you have and staff or rather wand ammo does replenish and with each weapon you have an alternative fire so for the wand it's gonna be a standard shoot 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 kind of thing and your alternate is firing multiple shots at once okay here we have a, like a frost cross bolt, which would probably freeze enemies. And then the alternate fire would be the shoot three. And so a lot of the weapons you shoot like once, and then the alternate would be to shoot multiple. Uh, we got some wraiths here to start off with. I hate these things because they always like fly and they're screaming and... Oh, my wand is already low. You basically movement is key in a game like this just like Binding of Isaac which I would say is a perfect comparison Binding of Isaac although there are some very big differences I mean uh, in Binding of Isaac you have uh, items that you can use on a whim they're normally called spacebar items well in Ziggurat all of the abilities that you get aside from the alternative weapons are passive so Aside from amulets that we can get. And I've only had one amulet, I believe. Uh, that, what I just got, was the portal key. In order to get to the boss room, you need the portal key. <clears throat> and from what I've gathered, bosses in this game are set in stone. Like, for the first area of boss, you're going to be fighting against the King Blob or whatever. I forgot what he was called. And you can see that the rooms aren't just small size, they are also quite large, and there can be lots of minions. And here we have these mushroom men and these skeletons that like to throw their swords at you in the hopes of making it stick into like a wooden plank or something fancy. Ooh. Here we just leveled up, you do get experience from each enemy that you kill. And as soon as I am done, I will show you what that's all about. Although, you can just push the button now to upgrade anytime. 
You don't have to wait until the room is clear. You can just upgrade. Uh, what makes the mushroom men really nasty? Their shots home in on you. Which is kind of weird, but I'm willing to accept it as, you know, what it is. Alright, so we have an upgrade available, and we can choose between two. So the first that I have, and these are randomly generated. The white orb restores half your max health points. I'm not going to get, so we're going to go with warlock. Mana gems give you more magic energy. And there are multiple tiers to each uh, ability. So that warlock, we can get level 2, which will probably end up giving you more mana. And the crystals that are color, like the green, the orange, and the blue, those are the mana crystals that replenish the bars over to the right, which determine your, your uh, weapons. I'm gonna head on up. Uh, don't touch the hot lava. And I really like the environments in this game. Uh, I've read around that the environments are pretty static. Well, I mean, look at this. It's a freaking lava room. And if you touch the hot lava, you're gonna get damaged. And there's also acid rooms that I've seen. And there are definitely traps that you can step onto, which are pretty bad. Here we have a very unique room. We could offer 26 health to get a... Uh, like a bonus, uh, we can offer green magic, but we don't have enough green magic that they want. Or we can offer nothing, and we can do all three of these, or as many of them as we want. We can only do one of each, though. So I will go ahead and show you. So earn twice the experience in your next combat. Okay, that's cool. I mean, would have been nice if it was like forever. And here's what happens with the nothing. You earn a new magic weapon, which is pretty cool. Let's see what we have. Now, I also heard that there are bad things that can happen when you uh, sacrifice things, but I have not seen it yet. So, there's that to be aware of. Or maybe I just misread that. Here is the boss room, and I'm actually going to go and do some experience grinding first before I do that. And because I feel like experience and getting your passive bonuses are can really add up, especially since I've never made it past the second floor. This is a pretty tough game, especially this second floor, because they just keep adding more and more monsters. These things I kind of hate, but there's actually two versions. The one that you saw that was spitting the acid, those are the things that I really hate. The ones that jump, they're not so bad, but the ones that spit the acid, the acid actually stays on the ground for quite a while, and you can always just go right on over it and it'll start damaging you. The jumping guys, they're just jumping around like this. I really like the hallways too. Like, I mean, you can't get hit by the hallways, but it will show you like some spike traps. And here's this, here's a, here's the trap room. And as soon as we step through, you're gonna see the trap go off. Or as we get close. I think this is one that is a shockwave. Is it the shockwave one? Oh no. Ah, oh, look at that. I guess that would be equivalent to your mob room in Binding of Isaac. I've actually never seen that one before. Ooh, can't get too close to the mushroom men. You also have champion versions of enemies, and they'll have like a aura around them. Like that green one right there. Let me see the spec freeze. That's a frozen spell. I think that also freezes. You can knock their uh, their shots out of the air. And uh, something that I really don't like about this game is that experience and ammo, they do go away over time if you don't pick them right away. So let's see what we have. Telekinetic, probably, yes. Uh, I never go for the white orb because it's rather pointless to refill your HP unless you really need it and you're about to get something really good. So telekinetic, we can attract items from a further distance, which is awesome. If I can get some more green staff energy, I will go back to that one room and offer staff. These barrels have can have different things. I've seen it have acid and all sorts of traps and stuff. Oh, speaking of acid, we'll deal with you. As you can see, I use my uh, secondary shot to deal the first damage and then I finish them off with a regular shot. Mainly because our wand doesn't do a whole lot for us. 
and you can see that that environment actually did crumble. That is something that's really cool about this game. You can actually break stuff. But not just the enemies. The enemies can break stuff. See, that barrel had acid and that house had the orange crystal, but my orange mana is full. Your mana does fill up and the mana only goes for that color but there's an ability that you can get where it will replenish all of your or other mana pools got a wraith over there it's just the one Ooh, something hit me oh that guy hit me he wasn't dead how about that Okay, that's the end of this area. I'm gonna go back and see if I have enough, oh, I should definitely have enough green energy for that. Uh, you can sprint, and sprinting is endless. It should be up here. Oh, snap. Yeah, I was a dinkus. So we're gonna go in ahead and fight our boss, the King Blob. And once you go in there, he will appear. There goes the portal. Ooh, a new one, Sir Arthur. This is the first time I've actually ever him and he will start sp because this I've actually never fought this guy Ooh, do those home look like they home as you can see I froze that one skull guy it's pretty cool I'm gonna try going just for the boss because if you kill the boss then all the enemies despawn come on one more hit there we go as you can see, all the enemies, they despawn. So, the enemies will spawn endlessly. And once you kill the boss, they go away. Which is, okay, it's pretty cool. Has that level of difficulty. All right, here's our portal, let's go up to the next floor. So, if you don't know what a ziggurat is, a ziggurat is kind of like a temple or tower, or rather it's a square tower that goes up. It's usually a square, or a square shape, or something along those lines. and you do get points for things that you do, so that's my total. Now, I will say this game is still early access, I want to say. Emberstone Quarry. And we have another item right here. The Firestorm Grenade. So we can only carry one of each type. So I could either have my Frostbow or the Grenade. And I'm going to go with the Grenade because the Grenade will definitely deal... A lot of damage. We're going to the left first. If you are new to my channel then you should know that I always go to the left first. Let's look at this area, it's just so cool. Anyways, I digress. Let's move on. Is, this is a very difficult game, or at least with your standard uh, your standard uh, minion or apprentice. I've played uh, Kraz once and I rather liked what she could do. Her wand just kind of rips through everything and especially since that's what you normally would use the most. I would say I'm gonna start playing her more than I do Argo. Now something that always confused me was the bar at the top doesn't actually display the enemy's HP. It tells you how many minions are left, or rather, not how many are left, but the HP of the room overall, which is kind of confusing. I wish they would tell you like how many minions there are, or the HP of a minion that you are aiming at. I think that would be a lot better. As you can see, we're not doing too bad. Ooh, they can attack through walls. Did not know that. I reached level 5 though. Did he just despawn? Where'd he go? Oh, he uh, went through the wall. There we go. And, yep, I will go ahead and get this. Uh, we'll increase my alchemy pool. That's the orange bar. It was at 120 and now it's a little bit bigger. There's no way to see what how much uh it, how much of each you have unfortunately well i guess you can tell like this and it's up to 145 and it's full 
So Argo has basic stats, so he has nothing that really goes goes with him, but the other one that I have, her wand deals a lot more damage, and she also starts off with 100 her wand uh, energy instead of the standard 50 that we started off with. And as you level up, your uh, wand pool does get higher. I'm quite sure of that. Because I think we started off with 50 at the beginning of this game, and now it's at 58. Ooh, this room is different. Alchemy, minus 50% others, 100% mana usage. So let's start using some alchemy. Kill some of these things. The alternate fire is that we can shoot more than one, and I hate this room because there's a ton of these uh, acid shooting guys, and once they start shooting, they fill up the room with their acidy goodness, and things get really cluttered fast. And the acid doesn't go down right away. It stays for quite a bit, which is something that can get really annoying. I think I had this room once, and I died on it because I was a dingus and used my wand exclusively. Uh, let's go to the left. You can actually see what's in a room before you go through it, and the doors close. There's the boss. So we're we'll going ahead and get some more experience. I don't know what the level cap is, if there is one. Ooh. What is this? Ooh, another one of these uh, trap room thingies. Mob room? Mob boss? Mob room? It's not a boss. Or I would just say mob. Um, don't be tricked by these uh, carrots. They're actually ma mandragores. You know, like in Harry Potter, they scream really loudly and waste away your brain. I will... Ooh, we also got some of these uh, archers. Enemies are respawned once. Are you kidding me? Yeah, so I guess that means we have to kill them twice. We still haven't gotten ourselves a staff. And staffs, from my experience, they usually fire quickly. They don't just, uh, it's not like your wand, kind of slowish, or like your other spells. They actually, they, I would consider them to be the machine gun of the uh, bunch. And they all do different things. I think I've only encountered two. One was a fast repeating one, and the other one was a, like, a multi-shot, kind of like a spread shot. We're only at 47 HP. This is a trap room. As you can see, uh, walking on that will probably not benefit us. And actually, there's nothing on the other side that we want. There's no door, so we're just going to leave that as it is. Oh well. I guess that means we get to... Well, you know, we are close to leveling, so I'm going to go ahead and level up one more time before fighting the boss and then go right to the boss fight. I have not actually reached the second level boss, so this is kind of exciting for me. Now, oh, darn it. The other floors have a tendency to spawn more enemies. As you can see, they spawn more enemies and usually they fill up the screen quite a bit. So I'm going to use my Tome of Freezing Energies, because it's a multi-shot, and froze that one. And being able to hit more than one enemy at the same time is a big plus, if I could actually hit. Dang it, my cat is opening up the shade right next to me. Oh, we ran out of uh, our Tome Energy, and so it automatically defaults to the wand. Oh, we still haven't leveled up yet. If we could find some blue energy, that would be perfect. Darn it, Simba, now I have a glare on my screen. Let's go up and see. Ooh, pretty. That's a big room. I really want to go in a big room. Yes, better to be big than... Uh, I have never seen this before. I guess we gotta kill the obelisk? That would be my guess. Can we kill these things? Oh, this is actually rather exciting. Can I kill anything? Or is this all just like really high HP stuff? Man. That definitely didn't do as much as I would like to. Can I... Kill things? 
It's my big question. Other than the obelisks. So I guess I'm going to exclusively go for obelisks. Ooh, I gotta shoot these things. Eh? I have to shoot the crystals on them. Or maybe that's just the... Uh, what happens when I shoot it a bunch. Looks like that's what happens when I shoot it a bunch. Is that guy still like chasing me? Or did I actually kill him? Because something is definitely shooting at me from... Yeah, that guy is. From down below. Ooh, 35. Ooh. What a master shot. I'm actually sad that I'm getting hit like a scrub that I am. And again, I am kind of new at this. Okay, we can do this. Did that drop any HP by any chance? I gotta check. Level 6. Scavenger, increase enemy drop rate. I will do that. All in the hopes that something will... Something good will come out of it. Okay, that's the second obelisk. Let's see, HP and some... XP. Awesome. Last obelisk. Hopefully everything will die as soon as it, I destroy it. Now I just have the minions. Okay, so... That one died rather quickly. That's probably the one that I've been attacking. And as you can see, when my wand energy goes down, it, uh... I can't use the uh, alternate fire ability. Well, at least we got some HP. Ooh, man, this guy, what a shot. He just turned invisible. Oh my gosh, enemies can turn invisible. That's cheating, game. You can't do that. Only players can turn invisible. Anyways, we're halfway to leveling up again. I actually want to keep exploring and see what else this game can throw at me. This, that was actually really exciting. Yeah, I think, oh. These guys are douchebags. We're gonna... Because they spawn two little enemies that explode. Yeah, that's right. They explode. The little ones, they explode whenever you kill them. And so you have to take them out from long range. There's this guy. And unfortunately, when the exploding damage doesn't damage enemies. It only damages... Uh, you. That's why I am using my multi-shot tome to take him out from afar. And also on the off chance that I can freeze. I don't know what determines the freezing chance. But I would assume that some enemies um, are weak against certain types. And as you can see, my achievements on the right I still have a long ways to go to get some, but at least they let you know where you're at in terms of chance. Also, I'm gonna have to change the scrolling because the scrolling is reverse to select other weapons. This was an interesting room. I like that room. Where am I going? Okay, so we can still. I'm gonna go ahead and go down since this will be the last room on going down right here. I'm sorry that I'm lingering on this room specifically, but man, I have not had much chance to actually explore. What are we dealing with? Ooh, these guys. The acid spitting ones. Not a cool. Go ahead and default to my freezy freeze. Oh, two champions. How interesting. Ooh. I keep walking into the, uh... I keep walking into the acid that they spit because I can't see just where it is when I walk backwards. Ooh, we got a lot of XP here. I will go ahead and level up. Switch your mana pools randomly and increase their size. Regain health by breaking things level 2. That's what I want. I think I got rid of both champions. Yes, I did. Because that was it. So, ow, that was a pretty tough room. I like it. Alright, let's see. You know what? I'm actually going to go and fight the boss. Because I think this episode has gone on long enough. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to die when fighting the boss. So, let's go see what the boss is. Do I want? 
I don't have number three, so let's use the bomb. Let's see, what are we fighting? Queen Amanda, the Forgotten Soul. Huh. So she'll be spawning wraiths like none other. Ooh. Yeah, not a good idea using that. And now I have to actually find which one Amanda is. Whichever one doesn't die after like a couple hits will be Queen Amanda. Is that her right there? Or is that just a shading? That was just a shading. Are you the one I'm looking for? You're the one I'm looking for. This isn't going to turn out so well. But I'm going to go for the boss. Uh, now, from what I've seen so far, the boss only spawns a certain number of enemies at once. So, if you kill enemies, they'll just respawn. But there won't be, like, ever just a ton. Oh, and there I go. I died. As expected. And you can see that something horrendously evil awaits us towards the end. And so, this is my total. This is the first episode of Ziggurat. I hope to bring up some more episodes in the future. I really like this game. I think um, I'm going to be giving up Binding of Isaac. Mainly because I suck at Binding of Isaac. But also to show something new. Something that's different that I haven't seen on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and check the description for my Facebook and my Twitter information. I'm always looking for a few more friends. And check the annotations at the end to, for the CV's playlist and other playlists that I've done. And to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I will see you in the next video.